talk about uh, user user experience and user uh, interfaces. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, uh, user experience is, uh, uh, is very important uh, since it's the facade. It's, it's what the, the users first see and what is it that they touch and, and they interact with it. Uh, to, to modify what it, what, it, what actually is, it's just some data set, right? So there's some abstract data set of, of mm -hmm. objects and instances that relate to another, that have pointers with one another, and you're giving this nice little facade in front of it uh, to, uh, as, a, um, as a way for them to uh, abstractly manipulate this data set, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and too often, because, because we are fam so familiar with the, uh, with the details of, of, the, uh, of how this is implemented behind the scenes, uh, and because we're geeks, uh, we, we, we tend to try to uh, make those details come to, up to the surface, to the user interface, right? Uh, but uh, certainly, we're, we're not the audience of, the, of this application. It would be somebody else who, who's not necessarily a geek, not necessarily knows the inner, and doesn't even care, or shouldn't care. You know? So if you, if, you, if you make a beautiful car, uh, typically, you know, you have a, uh, uh, the only ever, ever, ever thing that you'll ever touch, perhaps, is the, is the steering wheel, a couple of pedals and a, a, a stick shift, right? And, and where you sit. And, uh, and, and perhaps that's the only thing you know, you'll ever know about your car. You know, but certainly there's a lot of details behind the scenes. And I'm sure some folks will appreciate knowing some of, some of those details, but most folks won't. Right? So we have to think about the audience and what it is that we, ha we have to provide them to effectively use uh, this piece of machinery or this piece of uh, system. Uh, so user experience is, uh, tries to uh, look at um, Everything from the point of view of the of the user. Right? So, putting the user in the in the center of the universe. What is it that they see? You know, what is it that they need? What are the goals that they try they're trying to achieve? And try to see it from their point of view, and then you know, design something around uh, those uh, those needs. Right. And uh, so so user experience is is um, uh, several uh, several guidelines. It's a combination of several guidelines, uh, many design patterns, uh, uh, and um, and strategies on how is it that you measure. Whether something is going to be successful or not, uh, and, uh, and, and and user experience is very very hard to 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 uh, to come up with something that indeed is going to be successful, and you want to know this early on, as early as possible, before you start uh, delving into into uh, implementation, uh, since it'll be very very expensive to change later on. Right? So uh, so very typically you 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 use very cheap. Uh, very um, uh, cheap prototypes that are, are easy that they're just throwaway prototypes, perhaps uh, on, a, on the back of a napkin, something drawn on a piece of paper, um, uh, or, or or some of these tools, rapid prototyping tools, where you can drag and drop all sorts of widgets. Right, you can put something in front of the user and quickly uh, get a sense of whether something is going to be successful uh, or not. Uh, so so yeah, so everything has a has an interface. Uh, it was a table, a chair, this building, uh, you know, switches. We're always interacting with something, right? And we're always touching, and uh, and, uh, and and oftentimes we uh, we try to to use the uh, the user's uh, own experience uh, with the physical world, and try to bring it in, bring in some of that uh, that uh, familiarity uh, with the uh, uh, into into the system, right? So that uh, we already can fall back on some analogies on the real world, uh, so that they're mapped. Onto, onto whatever system we're building, right? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the example that you might be most familiar with is the operating system that you're using, right? either Windows or Mac OS, right? So they, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a breakthrough um, that, uh, that, that, that lowered the bar of people being able to use a computer uh, when uh, Xerox uh, and then Apple uh, you know, copied the, the analogy of the desktop, right? Of folders, of documents within folders, uh, and pointers and, and being able to manipulate it graphically, uh, so that that certainly lowered lowered the uh, the entry bar of folks being able to use a computer. They could they could they could associate you know real life experiences onto a uh, onto um, onto something that it was was uh, alien to them. Uh, now these analogies over time, you know, as as a you know as, as society evolves, as technology evolves, some of these some of these analogies start to lose. Uh, their original meaning, right? And so we're challenged again to look for what the what the next analogy might be, right? So so for instance, you know, using I, I, using the uh, the floppy disk icon to connote the, the note that you can save something. I don't know if you if any of you in this room has ever seen a floppy disk uh, or know what that is, right? Or or CDs or or things that uh, at some point 
you know, that meant something in, 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 in reality. Today, I don't know what, what I don't know what the next um, uh, analogy might be, since, since everything is converging, you know, to being some rectangular slate of a, of a, a, a you know, that, that it just displays anything you want, right? It's just some rectangle. You know, not a, you, you can't use, uh, you know, the phone or, or the, the, the uh, or, or any of these physical things, since they're slowly but surely disappearing, right? Uh, eventually, everything just be on the cloud. We won't even use laptops, right? There'll be some assistant that uh, lives in our ear, uh, and we just talk to, to, to them, and, uh, and it, it manipulates this uh, data set. Uh, so, but up until we get to uh, <laughs> uh, you know, putting, implanting something in our brain, uh, we still need to interact with physical things, yes? Uh, and, uh, and so the design, uh, we find it everywhere. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and some of them are very, very successful. Some of them are very intuitive. Uh, uh, typically, they're, they're organic. You know, they, they, they kind of uh, look biological that uh, have grown into, you know, from, from uh, us uh, sculpting as, as we interact with these things. Uh, that, uh, that you know, we, we do interact with, with things uh, uh, day to day. Uh, and we only see the exterior, the, you know, the, the facade. Obviously, it's hiding lots and lots of more details uh, underneath that, that presumably we're not, we're not, we don't care about. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever has seen one of these, if, if, if your parents or grandparents still have one of these hanging around. Um, uh, but uh, I, you know, a, lot, a lot of things in there, a lot of, a lot of very busy things that never ever, anyone ever used. Uh, um, uh, so, some some uh, user interface are, uh, are confusing or contradictory or, or ambiguous uh, on, on what do you actually mean. Uh, you know, and and it's, it, it's only ambiguous because we're not in the same context, right? We might be uh, we, we might be interpreting things from, a, from our own bubble of reality, and, and, and the way you interpret it, with, uh, it's, it's not how I interpret it. Something that might might be extremely funny in a, in a particular uh, culture, uh, when you translate it, it, completely loses its uh, its, uh, its its funny nature, right? Uh, so, so so yeah, so we, we kind of live in our in our own bubble of uh, knowledge. Uh, our island of knowledge, and we always interpret uh, things uh, from our 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 point of view, uh, and uh, and we're not really sure sometimes what things refer to what you know either physically because they're uh, close to each other, uh, and uh, and we we try to you know group things uh, together, and so in this particular case it's ambiguous on whether it's the arrow is, is grouped with the top rooms uh, or the bottom one, right? So, uh, and either one would be fine with us. It would just be a little more uh, uh, obvious. And, um, and, 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 um, and one of the things that, that, that uh, um, becomes obvious here is the importance of uh, white space, right? Of, of using white space uh, uh, spaces so that to make sure that there's enough space that allows us to uh, visually group things together, that things naturally go together and things that don't. Here, there's not enough white space to know perhaps that that white bar in the middle, perhaps that was the intention here, but it's not big enough to, for us to make it uh, 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 evident, self-evident that uh, we, we, we mean the, the uh, top arrow to mean the bottom rooms. Uh, perhaps the, 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 the physical uh, you know, uh, separation between the two, uh, uh, you know, between the top and the bottom, perhaps that's another way of grouping it, right? So, so again, um, we want to make it as obvious as possible. Uh, oftentimes, we, uh, we use all sorts of uh, abstractions right, to hide uh, detail. Okay? Like, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and oftentimes, we need to understand uh, where, if we need any of that detail. You know, it could be that for, uh, depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve, this level of detail is not enough. Right? If, I'm, if I'm trying to navigate um, uh, or, or, or measure distances, perhaps this, this abstraction is not good enough for me. Right? Uh, but if I'm trying to uh, measure logically uh, what or how things are relative to one another, perhaps this is this is plenty, right? And uh, and so so it, it, it's oftentimes very hard for us to decide what is the correct level of, of abstraction that we want to show our our users, right? Uh, because the, the user, uh, you know, when they start using it, uh, our, our our applications, our, our systems, they'll start to create a mental model. Right of how things, uh, how it thinks, uh, how that person thinks that uh, your system works, right? And and the 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 better their mind to model that they're making in their heads matches with the reality of how it actually works, you know, the, the more successful you will be, right? But if you you know if you, if they start using it and and, and uh, doing the same action over and over 
sometimes it behaves one way and sometimes it behaves some other way, they'll start creating their own mental model, model right? Uh, it'll be dissonant with what the reality is. Right? They might not be aware that this switch over here changes the modality, right? that, that if you have this switch flipped one way, it behaves one way, but if you flip it the other, it behaves some other way, right? So it's very frustrating for, for, uh, for, for users, right, that, that to, to, to not uh, you know, use something and it doesn't behave as, as they might expect it. So, so again, we, we want to create the right level uh, of abstraction and the model for them to, to, to build and, and, and successfully interact with, uh, uh, with our application. Um, right, so we, it, it, uh, user experience puts uh, the, uh, the user uh, in, the, uh, in the center and, and looks for the uh, best match for the user's uh, um, user interface to, to uh, achieve, for them to achieve the, uh, the desired, the desired uh, outcome or, or goal. Uh, there's um, there's di different aspects that we want to be able to, uh, to measure on how functional, how uh, useful, how how it's organized, their mental model, how, how the system is organized, and they can, they can uh, uh, to make better use of it. Uh, only one of them is, a, is, a, is a very, very important, is, a, is the, uh, I, you know, certainly the look and feel, right? If it looks uh, appealing uh, to you. Uh, so human-computer uh, interaction is, um, is a study, it's a research uh, that, um, anybody take HCI here? Yeah. Uh, you know, it studies to see what, how is it that we can measure the, uh, how successful a, uh, a, a particular uh, abstraction will be at, uh, at using uh, the, uh, the application. Um, how, to, how to lay it out. Um, uh, oftentimes, as, as uh, us as, uh, as geeks, uh, we, we, we actually uh, appreciate you, uh, looking at lots and lots of data. You know, we, we, uh, we're very good at, we have a very wide throughput on how much data can we consume, right? Uh, so a busy a screen might be okay with us. Yeah, that might have lots and lots of tables, right? With lots of rows, and we don't mind scrolling through that. And uh, uh, but but if you if you're an end user, uh, typically you would not appreciate that. You know, uh, you typically might might appreciate splitting the, the 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 information across multiple screens, right? Maybe you have a wizard, and they might ask you a couple of things first, and they might ask you a couple of things later, and and it just guides you, just hands holds you through the whole thing. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and and perhaps, but but it typically is that uh, happens that um, uh, that's very useful the very first couple of times uh, when a user is a, a new user, uh, and once they've made that mental model in their heads and they can start predicting how it's going to behave, they're actually going to start thinking that it's way too slow, right? That I have to go one by one in you know through many screens to achieve what it is, right? So as I understand uh, the product better, perhaps. We can add things such as uh, we can uh, do shortcuts, so we can uh, uh, we can provide um, um, uh, what do you call them? accelerators, right? Or, or alternate uh, views that uh, uh, can 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 show more information uh, uh, as as the as the user becomes more familiar with the uh, with the system. Um, right. So why even uh, bother with with UX? And it's it's because it's it's costly. You know, not not getting user experience uh, right uh, the first time is very costly. You're either going to spend time and effort getting it right at, at, the, at the onset, or you're going to pay it later. You, know, you either pay it forward or you pay it later. Right? Uh, you know, if if, uh, if, uh, if the system turns out to be very hard to use and people don't don't figure it out, they'll they'll return it. Right? Or or and and. Uh, and, and and, and just you know, talk bad about your product and try to convince others not to use your product, uh, or you'll they'll just be uh, calling on the phone, right, on support. You know, help me out. I can't. I can't get back uh, past the screen, right? And and folks, and um, you know, paying somebody to answer answer phones, answer questions on the phone is very very expensive, right? So if they stay on for you know, for several minutes, you know, you're, you're paying hundreds of dollars per minute. For that, for that person to um, uh, hours uh, to, for that person to be uh, online. So, so certainly there's this, a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of expenses uh, trying to fix this in the uh, posteriori. So if you can fix it early, it's a uh, it's better. Um, you know, we and we have a a, a a very bad track record of getting user interfaces right. Um, you know, it's just some statistics of um, of uh, you know folks five five percent of customers. Uh, return return this or 68% of the products because they're working properly. Even though they were working properly, there was nothing wrong with the product. They just couldn't figure out. They thought it was broken. Right? So you know, complicated setup, 
uh, average U.S. consumer spends 20 minutes on trying to make the device work before giving up and returning it to the, to the seller. So we have a, we have a, a pretty uh, bad track record at getting the user experience right, and lots and lots of money is being thrown down the drain uh, because of it. So certainly there's, there's a lot of incentive at uh, increasing our, our chances of success. Uh, so there's there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, stories that, um, of, uh, uh, of folks that uh, had already uh, explored a particular market and they seemed to be doing, doing fairly well. Uh, and but uh, you know it was uh, uh, that suddenly someone else in the, in the market came along and, and showed them how to do it right, uh, or or that uh, showed us showed us a completely different way of thinking uh, of of consuming uh, or um, uh, media. That we didn't even know we needed it, right? That uh, that, that comes along and, and finds a quirky way of looking at it. Uh, perhaps uh, the um, the prior ones were perhaps uh, hanging on to a dying uh, uh, analogy, right? Where 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 everybody was really what the Walkman was, right? Uh, and uh, the real at first perhaps kind of caught on to to uh, and, and, and played uh, onto this analogy of a, of a cassette player, right? Of, of playing. Uh, one one uh, one song at a time, uh, and uh, but but you know the, then Apple iPod came along and says, well actually from our studies people don't consume uh, one song and then decide what they're going to play next and then decide they kind of like to group things together and they, don't, they almost want to consume it like a radio as if they were a custom radio, right? That that somehow uh, uh, knew my my preferences and then just continue to play uh, music. I don't want to have to deal with having to choose every single song. Uh, and, and so this this turned out to be you know revolutionary, uh, and uh, and 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 so the iPod um, uh, was able to uh, uh, to eat their lunch, uh, and the rest is history. Um, and uh, and you know some some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, philosophical pronouncements of a uh, use, uh, good user experience is uh, is uh, is not necessarily just focusing on some, some, uh, the aesthetics. Uh, certainly, making something pleasing uh, makes makes total sense, right? Uh, that, uh, that that I want to look at it and it feels good and it looks good. Uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, you know Steve Jobs said that he always mentioned that it was much more than that. It's not only uh, here's a product, a black box, and then you know give it off, hand it off to somebody uh, to make it look pretty, right? It's a it's a it's a it's a whole process uh, that that somebody you know just picks it up and starts looking at it. Says, this is a this is an art piece, you know. This, this is something that I want to. On folks to, to 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 say something about it, right? That's a it's a it's a conversation starter, right? So that uh, uh, that, that that you look at it, and say, wow, this is well designed. Even even the way even the way the ports are are, are laid out, and then how much padding is on either side. It says this is good engineering. That's right? something that is it's, it's pleasing, uh, also you know to the to the geeks' uh, um, aesthetics in all of us. Uh, so yeah, so it's 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 the overall. A, uh, experience um, uh, that uh, that not not just the, uh, the the outside that even if you open it up it looks pretty you know something that if you if you look at the what you're trying to hide all the details that you get, you're trying to hide you still see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, design a lot of uh, it looks pretty even in the inside um, and yeah so the design is hard uh, we we uh, oftentimes don't take into account the context of who's going to be uh, using this who's going who the audience that is uh, that um, that uh, they might take certain things little uh, when it turns out it's supposed to be some kind of analogy, uh, and so so um, uh, so we always have to take into account the, the context. Without context, there's no there's no interpretation, right? If uh, you know if I if I if I just give you uh, ten random uh, numbers, right? Unless I tell you what the context is, you don't know what to do with it. Uh, so uh, so so certainly the 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 um. The, the challenge is to know what the context is uh, of, or what the expectations are uh, from the user's point of view. And the only way to do that, uh, to know what those contexts is, is to run tests, right? To give it to actual, actual users and really see what, they're, what, they're, what, they, what, they, what is it that they're trying to, 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 uh, to do. Uh, one thing that uh, we tend to do is, um, uh, as, as developers, again, and the, the geek in us, is that is that uh, we think that more is better, right? The more uh, capabilities and, the, and, the, and the, um, the more features we pack into a piece of software, 
uh, the, the more is going to be valued, the more we can we can sell it for. The things it, it should be worth more, and and you know and and, and, and don't appreciate uh, the um, uh, the you know the, the, the less might be more, right? That uh, some somebody might be overwhelmed. That uh, we, we're covering way too many topics, way too many features. I don't know where to start, right? Uh, and, uh, and and that uh, we have way way too many buttons. And uh, if you could just do something very very simple, but very, very well, if you could, if you could uh, um, focus on, on, on something very, very specific and do it better than anybody else, perhaps that would be a, a, a better solution. Now, one of the things that, that I have gripes with, uh, with the new PowerPoint is that I don't know where any, anything is anymore, right? It just, they just, just moved everything It's something so powerful, all, all in Excel. Excel is a very, very powerful uh, tool, right, that most people only use 10 or 20 percent of, of, of any of the features, right? Uh, and it's become so powerful that, that uh, it's, uh, it's, it might be useless, perhaps. <laughs> uh, although I think they've done a good job at, um, you know, at, at keeping the 80% the, the of what you usually, usually uh, you're, uh, that, um, that folks uh, use right, uh, readily in front of you. So I think that's, that's good. Uh, so th this is a very common uh, issue that, uh, that companies spend a lot of money and effort at building out more and more uh, features. Uh, and it turns out that, that most folks are just concentrating just a few subset uh, of the features and then just don't use any, any of the rest. Right? Uh, if, they, if they could just concentrate on, 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 on just those few, uh, it would be so much more successful. Um, uh, so, so, all right, so what is good design? Um, uh, so it sounds, it sounds uh, pretty simple. Uh, listed here, it uh, does what the user needs and wants. The thing is that who says what the user needs uh, and wants? That's the hard part. We don't know what the user needs and what they want. Uh, it is natural to use, helps and avoids trouble. Uh, again, who decides what's trouble and what kind of help uh, to give them and when? Uh, so it's, it's, it's very, very hard uh, uh, to, to, do it, uh, to do it well. Right? And the only, the only real way that uh, we've, we've known to is to do this uh, empirically, right? To to do some tests, uh, to put it in front of some folks, and the, and they let, let us know uh, from from there. Uh, right. So uh, puts the center, the user in the uh, at the center of the of the universe. Um, and uh, and different different folks will have uh, different uh, capabilities, uh, being able to remember things. Uh, ideally, uh, ideally you you would you would. Um, uh, uh, create an application that um, that gives a low memory uh, load on, on, on the user that the user doesn't doesn't have to remember a lot of things that it's a, and that instead is, is graphically represented in front of them right so that the user does doesn't have to remember that I'm in, in this particular mode or I'm in this particular window and based on where I am I should expect a certain behaviors right uh, if, if instead it could be made apparent to them uh, through the user user uh, interface, they uh, they they don't have they wouldn't have this cognitive load on uh, on how to deal with with uh, with certain behaviors. Uh, certainly, they have a, a, a um, uh, they, they can they can remember they can have an attention spans. Uh, they can learn over time, and uh, and ideally, our, our application would uh, you know would evolve uh, with with the user, right? It would adapt. That uh, a user at first they might be uh, they might be new, they might not know how it works, but eventually they they might. Uh, they might get it right, and as as they as they uh, learn it, uh, the they, they would ex they would uh, um, discover uh, newer ways or faster ways that the uh, application can help them. Uh, they um, you know certainly they have uh, cultural expectations, um, you know language differences, and 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 by the uh, at the end of the day, is this is it's very very unlikely that uh, you could design something that it's for everybody, right? It's uh, it's it's, a, it's an unrealistic. Expectations that, that you're going to please everybody. There's no way you're going to please everyone, right? So, so the you know, the best way is to try to identify who you know what is the majority or the the eighty percent of folks that I could uh, I could serve uh, well, right? And you know I'm just going to forget about the other twenty, right? I'm not I'm not going to even uh, bother. I know that there's no way they're ever going to be happy with me, uh, and I'm not I'm just not going to even go get bothered. So so yeah, there's there's no there's no one user. Uh, that is representative uh, of every of of, uh, of everyone, right? Uh, so so it's a it's a it's hard for us to, to identify. Just we're just just considering the the fact that some folks are just colorblind, right? And 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 a very common user interface of use that uh, 
that's, that's very, very common, right? It's ubiquitous, the, uh, the traffic light, you know, assumes that you, you can uh, see uh, differentiate between three colors, right? And it seems to have uh, been successful, even though, you know, 10% of the population can't see or differentiate colors, right? Uh, obviously, these folks, we've, we've made a conscious decision that regardless, nevertheless, this is by far the best, the best, uh, the best we can do, the best experience. Um, and, uh, and, and, and perhaps we might, we, might, we might change the color a bit uh, so that uh, the, the differences uh, between the two are, are large enough that you can capture, the, you, can, you can differentiate them even if you can't see the differences in color. Right? Perhaps in the differences in brightness, uh, the difference in sizes or differences in shapes uh, can be can be used as as cues of um, uh, if you, if you can't tell uh, the 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 the, um, um, the the colors apart. Okay. Um, also, again, uh, the uh, the that uh, it's uh, unrealistic to try to please uh, everybody. Uh, let's, let's not try and make it so general uh, that it's it's uh, worthless to any one person, right? Uh, you know, there's no, let's not try and, and uh, make it so it has uh, multiple sizes and one size fits all. Uh, again, there's no way to, uh, to try and uh, optimize for, for every single user. There's no, there's, there's, so it's, let's not even, not even try. Um, all right, so, so what, what are some of the strategies that uh, uh, might, we, might we use that uh, can improve our success rate? at designing, making good uh, designs. Um, so we're already familiar with uh, some of these uh, strategies that uh, we, we, uh, we use in uh, software uh, engineering. Uh, the, the various methodologies, whether we're using uh, Waterfall or Agile and uh, uh, Iterative and whatnot, yes. And, and so, so, so certainly that's a good place to start uh, to consider uh, as a, um, uh, some of the strategies that we could, we could use uh, for user, user experience design. Uh, so, so waterfall typically, right? We 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 gather the requirements. Perhaps we do some studies with some prototyping, uh, and we go to the to the to the end. And, and we've talked about a, uh, either this being one shot, right, in, in the waterfall, or uh, you know, kind of using this, these same ideas but shortening and perhaps creating an iterative uh, approach that uh, uh, that the, the release of one of the phases might feed into the the next one, uh, where where that feedback can. Uh, it can can become of uh, uh, the the input of the next iteration, and we, so cer certainly this might be a, a place to, uh, to to start. Uh, but but you know, in close inspection, we realize that they're not actually a good idea. Uh, that um, uh, the, the user experience actually has to live much much earlier than any of this uh, before any of this starts. Okay. Uh, and and that, that's why uh, the um, the first couple of uh, assignments are user centric. You know, let's start from the user's point of view and have you design certain prototypes, paper prototypes, and gather some uh, some feedback from real users, right? So just just to try and and, and get some ideas from from folks out there. Uh, since this doesn't really work, right? Uh, instead, we have to find very inexpensive. This this uh, this is a very expensive way of doing it, right? One, by the time you get to the release. And you finally give it to somebody. Uh, it's kind of too late to make any changes. Uh, so, so ideally, we'd like to be able to do it very, very early on without have, ha we having to incur in any costs or large costs or investments uh, that that might prove uh, uh, the, the wrong way uh, to go. Uh, so, I, ideally, we we, uh, uh, we we would think that uh, uh, even if we if we take that that same uh, waterfall idea, but we make it tight. And uh, if, we could, if we could just iterate, right? If we could just iterate uh, and get some feedback uh, and put it out there, and folks uh, let us know whether they, they, they like it or not like it, and and, um, and 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 then whatever they don't like, we can feed into the next iteration. Uh, that actually turns out um, uh, to be too late, right? Uh, even, even that's too late. The the the, the iterative process, uh, because folks don't don't like to be uh, guinea pigs, right? Folks that are out there. Uh, or the client, especially if you're, if you're paying for something, uh, you already have very high expectations of what is, is going to be given to you, right? Uh, so, so, um, uh, so kind of the iterative part of putting it out there and folks giving you feedback, um, you know, they're, they're not going to want to see something that's half baked, something that's uh, it's, it's it's kind of broken, and they don't they're not liking it. Uh, so, ideally, what you want to do is is even before then, right? Uh, do some some uh, some empirical testing. 
uh, of, uh, of user interfaces to, to, uh, uh, to very quickly you know, uh, uh, weed out some of, the, uh, some of the alternatives early on. Uh, so yeah, so that we don't want to risk, uh, you know, um, having the uh, paying customer uh, looking at, at some of these uh, half half baked solution. Uh, so what, what we're going to try what, what we're going to try and do is um, uh, is, is is use a, a model that uh, is going to have a, you know a very cheap um, investment at early on uh, where we can either do it on a piece of paper or or some uh, some cardboards. Or, or just on a, a whiteboard uh, that, uh, and, and have uh, folks that are representative of the real user that can sit, that can stand in place of the real user, right, that might have the same uh, background, that might have the, the same kind of goals uh, that uh, we, we can test on them uh, and, and derive some, some of these uh, initial knowledge early on that can educate us on, on our choices uh, on our user experience. Okay. Uh, so right, so the first first step might be to identify who the users are, uh, and uh, and try to identify proxies, folks that can in, stand in in place of them that uh, might have the same demographics, might have the, the, the same background, um, might have some of the same the culture or context uh, for 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 our, our target uh, audience, um, and then um, right, sorry. So this is the the real user. The real user, for, first of all, you know, the interview, the interview, and the, and the brainstorming sessions. Right, uh, we we want to uh, identify the requirements. So we've 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 talked about that already. Or the requirements we've, we've uh, last uh, last uh, uh, last week, where we we talked about gathering requirements, eliciting these requirements, brainstorming, interviews, uh, doing some prototyping. Uh, we are that we we'll identify their uh, what what is it that they're trying to accomplish and make sure we got that right. Right, um, and and try to identify these these users and create a profile of each one of these. Right, what what their cultural background is, uh, what the demographics, uh, what what is their mental and physical abilities, uh, their communication patterns, uh, skill levels. Um, you know, what is that trying to accomplish? Uh, and we create these profiles so that when we're going to do the tests, when we're going to do the uh, the uh, the prototyping. We can measure our prototypes against folks that are representative of our users, right? So, so that they they uh, they, they match the profile of the audience that uh, we're trying to uh, we're, we're trying to address. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, so yeah. So the the, the uh, as uh, as I mentioned uh, last week, the 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 most common way that uh, we're going to gather some of these requirements is by interview, right? We'll start perhaps with a brainstorming session uh, where lots and lots of folks get together and, uh, and, and somebody moderates these and, and they'll follow up by some observation and following folks around and jotting down some of, the, some of, these, uh, uh, some of these statistics. Uh, but by far the more, the more uh, uh, common ones is uh, interviews, right? Where we interview the, the, the person and try to uh, gather some of this information. And we'll start running these types of interviews, you know, either um, uh, uh, the instructors during during uh, class time. So I think next week will will be our first work session, right? Where where we'll we'll have you folks perhaps uh, have uh, questions uh, for for us the, the instructors, and we'll talk about uh, the different the the, requir the requirements as you gather them uh, for your assignments for the project. Uh, right. So a, a, a structured uh, interview. Perhaps you might send uh, questionnaires before the interview. Uh, and you gather some of those questions before, uh, and based on those responses, uh, you 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 come up with a set of questions that you might want to follow up uh, on those interviews, right? Okay? Uh, um, and and you know, it's, it's a fairly formal uh, uh, process. And you uh, and, and and right, it might be very hard to to recruit some of these some of these folks. Uh, a lot of these folks might be. Uh, you know, busy. They might be traveling. They might be busy running the business, right? Making money uh, to pay you. Uh, how to conduct a study? So, so ideally, you you uh, you come up with a um, with a prototype, either paper prototype or cardboards, uh, and uh, or even you know if you feel comfortable uh, with some of these uh, rapid prototyping tools that you can you know you can drag and drop several of these widgets, uh, or even if you you know if you, you feel comfortable you know doing it quickly on using Bootstrap or uh, HTML and, and you want to put something together, but it could certainly be with PowerPoint or, or a, a Photoshop or uh, um, where you can you know put something together quickly that even even 
even a prototype navigation that if you click on one button, it navigates a different screen. If you click over there, it navigates to a completely different screen. I mean, you could, you could do some pretty sophisticated uh, prototyping just with PowerPoint, okay? And it has some of these widgets. Uh, uh, there's some online uh, tools that allow you also to, to create these uh, uh, you know, mock-ups. Mock-ups is one of them. It's a pretty good. Um, and I, th I think it's free, or used to be free, uh, mockups.com. Uh, that, that has lots and lots of widgets for, for phones, for desktop, for all sorts of uh, uh, applications. And, and you can do navigation. You can, you can create a fully navigable uh, prototype that folks can, can interact with. Uh, and, uh, and you're going you're gonna, to um, um, have these folks. You're going you're gonna, to uh, 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 identify three, four, uh, either students or landlords or other, other professors that might be willing to help you out, uh, some of your fellow students, uh, that um, you're going to ask them, you're going to give them uh, some somewhat uh, um, a well-described task for them to do, right? It, it might be uh, search for a movie and and read their reviews or something, right? That might be a task. Uh, presumably, based off of the use cases that you might have covered, you might have identified in your in your in your UML uh, uh, diagramming, right? With sessions in the in the requirements gathering phase. Uh, so, based on these use cases, th those might be tasks. That you might um, describe to your uh, uh, to your subjects, right? To your um, to your test subjects, uh, and uh, and then and then um, ideally you, you will get the same task. You know, explain the exact same way uh, to three or four or five of your uh, of of, um, of your test subjects, and then you know, ask them to accomplish it. Uh, hopefully, the the user experience, the user interface, will be self-explanatory, and they will be able to achieve uh, that that goal, that task that you gave them. Right? And you have to resist the uh, the temptation of helping them. You know, if they run into a, if they run into an issue, uh, into a, a set of problems, uh, they you know it, that that certainly is going to educate you into that there's there's there's, there's, there's a deficiency uh, in the application. It's not clear how to move forward. Right. Uh, so that's going to be all input that uh, is going to is going to educate you on the user interface. It might be that uh, uh, you identify a glaring flaw. That uh, that perhaps you just want to scrap the whole thing and fix that flow, and perhaps and you're gonna just have to completely restart all over, right? With a completely new set of uh, of folks uh, that might have already been familiar and might give you some skewed results, right? Uh, some 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 in some cases it's a good idea to film uh, the person uh, that uh, um, uh, that they're gonna uh, they're gonna be under 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 test, right? Uh, so that you can go back and, and measure the time, right? You might you might have a, um, uh, you might be measuring the, the seconds or the minutes that it takes them to uh, identify which, which button to click or what what to type, or and you might ask them to think aloud, and you were gonna uh, you're gonna keep track of a very uh, uh, verbose log, right? Uh, as they're thinking aloud, as of what uh, what they're what they're trying to achieve, what you know, if they have any doubts in their mind, they should be thinking those things aloud. Uh, and you're going to jot these things down, and how long did it take them from one step to the next step? step right? And you're going to and, and, and you're going to uh, try to uh, then um, you know, graph this as a as a result, and try to identify uh, common uh, uh, common missteps. Right? Where is it that most folks are are are, are uh, you know are taking the longest time? Right? Uh, what is it that uh, that you know if it's just one person wasn't able to do it? Uh, maybe that's not an issue, but if it, if it's consistent across multiple times that you've done run these experiments, then certainly it's a it's a, a place of of interest, right? That for you to focus on your user interface. Uh, we we there's uh, um, if you're going to be filming uh, folks, there are some consent uh, forms that they need to uh, fill out, right? That they consent to be filmed. And um, you know, in certain cases, you might only want to film their their hands. Uh, or want to film them just from, from their back, or not necessarily uh, be uh, uh, that, that, that you can tell who they necessarily are if you want to keep it anonymous. Uh, so, but that that you have to figure out with the folks that you uh, you're going to run the these uh, these tests with. Okay. Um, so so what is it that, that what what do we actually give them to to interact with? Right. I mean, it could be as simple as a a sheet of paper, an eight by eleven uh, sheet of paper, where you you're drawing it by hand, uh, and maybe that's enough only to do preliminary uh, testing, right? That uh, you you want to just test some uh, some quick ideas, and, and and when you have 
way too many alternative ways of doing something, right? Uh, you just want to uh, weed out quickly uh, which ones which ones are, are, are bad ideas to go uh, uh, you know, rat hole, uh, and which ones should you continue exploring, right? And, and uh, as as you weed out these, uh, these these ideas, you might get progressively more sophisticated prototypes. Okay, uh, so you might start with just throw away a piece of a scrap, right? Uh, that, you, that you just draw, draw on, a, on, a, on a whiteboard, uh, and eventually becomes perhaps a, a, a you know something that is more physical, uh, maybe something that's in cardboard uh, that 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 feels like the real thing, perhaps, uh, maybe in in, uh, in plastic with, with real buttons, uh, but uh, but it's not the real thing, right? just just a facade, uh, and uh, you know it could be. Um, it could be uh, again. It could be just just drawn on a on a uh, on a whiteboard or a or a, or a piece of paper. Um, or you can have uh, you know if, it, if it's tabs. Uh, you know, a very inexpensive way to, to model them is to have you know color coded uh, uh, pieces of cardboard, right? That uh, with, with with tabs and their and their and their um, description of what they are. And you know they could just flip to 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 model the fact that they can go from one place to another, right? They can just navigate, and the, and, and and certainly these these are these are very simple to, to come up with, you know, just draw uh, hand drawn, uh, and they turn out to be fairly fairly, uh, uh, you know, they, they they tend to give a lot of information, uh, even though they're not, they're very inexpensive, right? Uh, it's a, it, it's common that uh, you know a very sophisticated version of this. Might not give you any more information than just these uh, uh, these paper uh, prototypes. Okay, so it's usually not worth the effort to go that extra step of, of, of creating it. I certainly prefer it, right? But that's a, uh, that's, a uh, that's my preference since I just enjoy creating the user interfaces. Uh, you might too, right? And, and and coming up with something sophisticated, but it's certainly not going to give you a, a or, or very very marginal uh, uh, additional uh, information. Right, uh, whether whether you know how much you're going to, how much how much you're going to gather uh, from from um, the sophisticated the sophisticated uh, uh, prototyping. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't have to be just of eight by eleven. It could be you know large, uh, you know large cardboard, right? And, and you have you can flip these, right? It could be uh, these uh, these um, piece of paper in a, in a, in a, in a, what do you call them? Easel, like in an easel that has all, all these big chunks of paper, piece of paper. Um, certainly, that that would work as well. Uh, if you want to go a little further, there's plenty of tools out there uh, that uh, rapid prototyping tools that uh, you can drag and drop all these widgets. Uh, and and again, you can be as sophisticated as actually implementing it uh, using just plain old HTML and uh, and Bootstrap or uh, any of these uh, CSS uh, libraries. Um, so, so yeah, so these, these, uh, these, uh, wireframing, uh, certainly they have the, the advantage that, uh, they're, they're very expensive, right? That, um, um, you know, typically you don't have to uh, have a, a, a design firm come in and, and build anything for you. Uh, you can just do this in-house, right? Just a, a, on paper. Um, and, uh, and, and you can quickly weed out, uh, lots of pro possibilities, uh, and, uh, and, uh, to be refined with the feedback that folks give you, and, and you can quickly just scratch something and just redraw something right there, or just throw it away and, and give you very quickly a new version of the same interface, and then, and then keep keep iterating over that, right? Um, uh, it, so one of the things that the advantage is that there's no code required. But that's also one of the disadvantages, right? That there is no code uh, uh, generated, right? There's there's a there's no tangible artifact that you get at the end. You only get choices, right? The good, cho hopefully, the good choices of what, of where, where, which way to go. Is um, uh, today there's some prototyping uh, tools that that uh, uh, produce code, right? You you drag these things around, you push a button, and it generates uh, not only the user interface. It will generate the Java classes for you. It'll generate the relational database. It'll generate the entire Stack, you know, just by dragging and dropping some of these these uh, uh, some of these widgets on the screen. So pretty pretty powerful, right? Um, they tend to generate very flat uh, data models, right? Since, since there's no you, you know easy way to 
uh, to, to, uh, to come up with the relationships between the dis different data, uh, data sets. Uh, but nevertheless, there, there's some tools that allow you to, to do some of this. Um, so, all right, so that's, uh, that's uh, some of the, the strategies. Um, so there's some, some principles uh, on uh, user UI uh, design. Um, and uh, Jacob Nielsen certainly is uh, uh, one of the folks who are more, um, more known in this, uh, in this space. Uh, that uh, he, you know, he, he has identified what uh, we were referred to in, in, in other places. We've defined them as like design patterns, things, things that uh, uh, from experience, what we've seen over many, many years of, of designing uh, user interfaces, uh, what seems to have worked well, what seems to not have worked well, and, and uh, so just, just nuggets of wisdom uh, that we have uh, accumulated over years uh, of experience of, of building these things. And, uh, and, and so this, this is one of, his, uh, uh, one of his books on designs uh, where he you know, goes through some of the 10, 10 principles of user interface design. Uh, one of them is, is that uh, you know, we, we, already, we already come with a lot of baggage on whatever culture that we come from or whatever uh, our reality around us is, and, and whatever we can, whatever we can uh, lean on your prior experience, right, on your prior knowledge, uh, the easier it will be for you to ease into uh, whatever it is that we're asking you to do. Okay, so if uh, if it's not completely alien to me, right, that it's recognizable that uh, that if I if I if I understand that certain things behave the way they, they do, and then I can use that same knowledge and transfer it over to a different a different domain. Uh, it'll be easier for me to use those, right? Uh, and certainly the, uh, the 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 user interface, uh, you know, in the in the um, uh, late '80s uh, of uh, uh, of using this desktop uh, analogy of, of folders and documents, and, uh, certainly it allowed us to you know bring our knowledge of the real world of dealing with real with, with uh, real documents uh, in a real desktop. Uh, uh, certainly, that that made it easier for a large, you know, the mass masses to, to adopt the use of uh, of, uh, a, of computers. Certainly, it's an abstraction, right? It's none of this is real. There are no real folders. There are not real documents. This is all zeros and ones uh, uh, down at the um, at the uh, at the um, uh, implementation level, right? Uh, uh, but nevertheless. We do this all the time. We create all these abstractions for even for us. Uh, it's just that it, it, it depends on what level of abstraction do you want to deal with the problem, right? If, you're, if you want to deal with it in an assembly language, uh, well, perhaps that's a very low level of abstraction, right? Uh, that's why we invented perhaps C or C++, right? So, okay, well, let me put a, just a little bit of layer of abstraction on top of that, and uh, I don't want to deal with zeros and ones or hexadecimal, uh, I'll just make up an abstraction. I'll call them integers, or I'll call them booleans. Uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll call them strings. So all those are abstractions on top of something that is a little more detailed. Yes, and and uh, and, and that's that's what and that we we can just decide what is the level of abstraction, right? And, you know, all the way down from zeros and ones, all the way up to just uh, uh, documents and folders and 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 and, uh, and, and a file structure. Yes, uh, it's just deciding. What is the right level of abstraction for the audience, right? And and this seems to be, have been a fairly successful uh, abstraction layer uh, of the the desktop, and um, it certainly uh, has made it available to millions and millions of users worldwide. Um, um, uh, another another important aspect is uh, is the uh, the you know, um, minimizing the, 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 the space or the, the, the visual space or the conceptual space uh, when you are manipulating something, right? Uh, of uh, whether either you're dragging something around or you're moving something around, uh, that you see a continuous uh, in, in, uh, interpolation between the different states uh, that, uh, of, of where an object is, okay? Uh, so, I mean, something as simple as scrolling the page Right, that, uh, that if you click on, a, on, on, a, on an arrow to go scroll up or down or, or, or on the thumb, uh, that, uh, that you, you see a continuous um, uh, uh, representation of the data, right? so that you, you're, you're not uh, asking the, 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 uh, the mind 
of the brain to make the the leap between the two states, right? That that wait a minute, how was I here and now I'm over there, right? Uh, if uh, if you're scrolling up or down, uh, perhaps it's a it's a small mental exercise, right? That yes, well I clicked to go down, it must be that I'm a, I'm lower in the page, yes. Uh, but it, any clues that you can give the user uh, that uh, there is a that, that 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 transition between those two states uh, was a smooth one and it was visually represented, uh, you are removing that, uh, that, uh, that, um, uh, that load, of, uh, you're removing it from me having to, 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 to make that transition uh, and because it's represented visually. Right? Um, I, I, th I think uh, uh, modern, uh, for instance, the, the fact that, that I, I press up and down right, between these two slides, uh, uh, and on the right-hand side, it's a, it's a very brisk, it's a uh, um, uh, that it just gets replaced, yes. Uh, and and I, I, my mental model is that uh, th this right hand side was was uh, uh, changed. Uh, my computation is that is because I must have gone down. It must be the lower, uh, the 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 one after, right? Uh, but if I don't have the cool on the left hand side, uh, and I you know miss and I don't touch, uh, and I miss touch the the key the the keypad. Or, or the right, the the, the up down uh, key. It, there's no clue for me that whether I went up or down. Yes. Uh, so so in, uh, newer implementations of, of these uh, uh, tools uh, uh, try to you know lessen that uh, that load, right? Where where, they, we, where you see a lot of nice uh, animation of the transitions between the two states uh, of what of the application. Right. So 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 what I like to be able to see is that, for instance, moving this down. There was a little bit of it. You see, it was a little bit animated, uh, trying to show you that there was a transition between uh, the above and the below. But on the right hand side, there's absolutely no transition of that. So, so the more a, a, a user interfaces give you those clues, the less I need to make make the computation of where was I and where I am at right now, right? So certainly Nielsen uh, um, talks uh, talks quite a bit of, uh, about that uh, already. Um, what, one, of, one, of the, uh, one of the problems of, of using these, these, uh, these metaphors of slides and, uh, and desktops and, and, uh, and, and file systems and, and folders is that eventually, you know, as, as culture moves forward, uh, a, lot, a lot of these uh, uh, analogies break. Like, you know, again, uh, not, not many of you, uh, you have ever seen a floppy disk, uh, so, so it, it would be silly to keep using that icon right uh, as as the analogy of, of me that you want to save something right because its meaning is, is, has been lost right uh, or, or, or or sometimes I, I see on, on a phone uh, you, I, you still see the the, uh, the icon uh, of the um, you know of older phones right the rotary phones that, that you pick up uh, and you, they, they still use that icon. I don't, I, don't, I don't know that anybody here who's, who's ever used one of those. Um, and, you know, I'm old enough to remember having having those and actually using the rotary, right, to, 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 to call. But again, that analogy, that icon, eventually will, will be meaningless, right? It will have no meaning. That that it won't it won't help me at all, right? And, and certainly, uh, uh, user interfaces. Certainly, Windows went through this. Uh, the iPhone, and the Mac is going through it also. Uh, of, of what will be the next, you know, what's the next thing they're going to move towards if we are losing any of that physicality, right? Nobody actually uses, uh, uh, you know, these binders or, or these folders. Uh, folks, you know, well, you're still writing on a piece of paper, but eventually that all this will disappear, you know? And so what will be that, that analogy that there's nothing that you can actually touch? Um, uh, you know, I know there was a big spout in the... Uh, uh, on, on when they were doing Mac OS and the iPhone and the iOS that uh, the, the previous uh, folks, uh, you know, there was, it was just the, the, the iOS was littered uh, with physical analogies uh, of the notepads and, and with, with, with pencils and things that, that looked like binders with like leather binders uh, that, uh, that, that again, uh, a lot of folks never have used any of those, right, that, that have no meaning. Uh, although my, my wife loves, loves to uh, use a lot of those uh, leather, um, leather binders. Um, it, se it seems to be coming back, uh, like doing, like for journaling and Hobonichi and using these, uh, uh, and uh, there's a lot, a lot of money go that goes into that. 
Looks pretty though. <laughs> um. Uh, right. So so again, there's there's a lot of clues and a lot of cues that uh, from the physical world uh, that we can lean on uh, based on the affordances. Uh, that uh, physical systems give us, right? The you know, understanding that things can be turned, things can be pushed, uh, uh, things can be flipped, um, um, that, that you can select or you can scroll and, and just push things around up and down. Right, so a lot, of, a lot of those cues, we, we, we're trying to, to bring them, bring them um, bring with us. And, and it's, 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 a, you know, it's, a, it's a, a, a very, very important aspect of, of success of factor um, I, I always tell the story when I was when I when I uh, used used a MapQuest. You know, when, when it was it was a changing experience for me when I went from using MapQuest uh, to using uh, uh, Google Maps. Uh, you know, the, the, and the same use cases, the same uh, uh, the same affordances of being able to scroll the map up and down, left, right. Anybody remember MapQuest, uh, where you, you know you can touch the buttons and, and scroll and zoom in, uh, but it was all very jerky. It was all um, you know the whole entire page uh, was refreshing, uh, and then going going uh, to map uh, uh, Google Maps and be able to directly manipulate the data, right? As a, I'm grabbing it, or I can move it and jiggle it up and down, right? And and when I let it go, it uh, it has some inertia. You know, it behaves like something I would actually throw, right? So so it's it's a uh, it's, it's 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 it behaves as if it were a physical object, right? That that eventually will come. It has friction, right? That at some point it will come to to stop, right? So, so these are all things that I can I can I can relate to in the physical world, right? And and so it behaves I, as I would expect it, right? Uh, so I can, I can I can very easily map, uh, uh, pardon the pun, um, you know my real life experience to interacting with this uh, with this system, and uh, and, and, and you know same same thing uh, interacting with uh, uh, with long scrolls on a phone, right? Where you you know, you're just touching, you flick it, right, and it just scrolls. Uh, I was showing my, my son the other day the uh, when it, when the iPhone just first came out, 2007, uh, when when we well, the first time that we we saw, you know, just you know touching the screen and just flicking, right, uh, and everybody just went, wow, nobody had ever seen that, right. Uh, it was obvious after they you know uh, Steve Jobs did it on stage. Uh, but it, you know, it, it, but before then, it was you know had never been actually. Now, I'm sure it had been done in uh, in research labs and at MIT and the media lab and a whole bunch of other places, right? Wherever uh, wherever uh, Apple turned out to uh, you know uh, copy it from, uh, you know. But but these were huge prototypes that were you know huge projectors with with uh, you know humongous screens that, that you could interact with your both hands, and they were trying to say, well, how do we do that? And we, we, we and uh, into a small little screen that you can you know put in your pocket. Uh, so, so it was obvious back then, but I remember uh, you know, back when I was uh, doing HCI, uh, I was going for for my my degree, and somebody had suggested, well, what if you you know you could do that with uh, you know, directly manipulate the scrolling, and, and, and folks uh, laughed at, at uh, this this lady. And it turned out to be the 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 uh, one of the best ways that you can interact with uh, long scrolls. Uh, all right, so other other aspects in Nielsen uh, is to uh, use. You know, natural uh, mapping right, of the physical world that uh, you don't have to cognitively uh, uh, do the mapping in your head on you know which knob maps what uh, what uh, um, a burner right and that uh, you know I, I have the top one in my house right and I always find that I have to read the label on which one is it is it the top right top left top right and and um, and, and I'm concerned because you know the the, the, the labels are fading out. Right, that at some point I'm not going to be able to read uh, or what what is which one that, that goes with it, right? So I'm going to have to turn it on to see what it is, that which one goes with, with which one. So it's a so again, so any 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 cognitive uh, uh, computation that, that you're asking the, the brain to do, it'll make it so much harder. Uh, but if, if if it maps naturally, definitely uh, you should go for it. Um, you know, today you have these these burners that uh, uh, are inductive burners, right? Where where you know you, they, they don't when you touch them, they don't, they don't get hot. So you can you can track directly with the burner, right? You can you can touch it, you can flip it around and change the temperature you know, by directly manipulating the burner, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if, if you put something on top of it, it gets too hot. I don't know how that works. Um, 
Right, actions should, should, uh, actions should have uh, an immediate response that somebody can, uh, can relate to, right? That if I do something, I, I can see a, a, a feedback, immediate feedback, right? That I can say, ah, if I do this, that happens, right? And after I do it a couple of times, I'll, uh, 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 you know, I'll train myself to expect that kind of behavior. Uh, but if, I have, if, I, if there's too much lag between any actions I make and some outcome that, that uh, I will not make the connection, right? So, so it has to be evident, self-evident what the, what, the, uh, what the reactions are, that the consequences are for my, uh, for my uh, actions. Uh, that, uh, that, that I follow some consistency, right? That, uh, uh, that, that you're not asking the user that for every single screen, you're asking them to relearn an entire new vocabulary a, uh, or, 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 or set of, 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 uh, of uh, ways to interact with them that sometimes you use knobs, sometimes you use sliders, sometimes you use uh, buttons and, 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 uh, and uh, increments. Uh, um, sometimes you do it linearly, sometimes you do it uh, you know, ad hoc. Uh, that, that, that you follow a common theme across your, your, your application that if I learned it somewhere else in my application, I can, I can reapply what I learned earlier in other parts of the application, or I can carry some of that, some of that learning with me across the application, right? Or that, that uh, you're using some, uh, some knowledge I might, have, I might have gathered from other versions of the application or similar applications that, uh, that I, can, I can bring with me. Uh, that uh, that uh, inevitably the user will run and, uh, into, into trouble, uh, they'll paint themselves in the corner, uh, and uh, they'll they'll ask for help. They, they, they won't know what to do, right? And and, uh, and you know, uh, do, uh, doing experiments on, on real folks, uh, that certainly will elicit uh, where fo where are some spots that uh, we have identified that are somewhat harder uh, than, than others uh, that uh, might have a learning curve. And, and we, we should be ready to give context-based uh, help uh, whenever they are in a particular uh, spot that we might have identified, right? Uh, or or we, where we, we can give a, a small tutorial at the beginning and where you know, we, we, we just point out some of the more uh, important aspects of the user interface, right? That if you click here, then you go here, then you go there. We might animate some of this so that uh, to train them a bit. But where do you get started? You know, oftentimes, we, we're given way too many options. We don't know where to get started. Uh, so certainly we, we want to provide uh, some form of uh, help, uh, you know, maybe with a little question mark that we hover over and we give them some, some contextual help uh, that uh, if we click on it, perhaps it takes us to a search, searchable uh, uh, documentation. Uh, and if we click on it, perhaps it'll be right on the spot that might answer a question about what I might have, about what I clicked on, right? Ideally, there's no need for documentation, right? It's so self-evident that I don't even include a, um, a, 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 a booklet for documenting. Uh, user control uh, freedom, uh, uh, ideally we want to make uh, uh, so that um, uh, if, if I run into, you know, if I was, if I was you know, following um, a set of steps and it was, it was fine up until a, a particular step and, and I get into trouble, uh, Certainly, I'd like, to, I'd like to access some help, but alternatively, you might give me a, a ways to kind of like uh, abort what I'm doing, right? It says, you know, stop, right? I want to go back to where I was, a safe place where I, where I, where I knew where I was, right? And I, I, I must, must have touched something. I don't know what I did. And, and you allow me to undo uh, and go back to a previous stable state uh, of the application. Or uh, if, if um, inevitably your application might be doing some, you know, fairly complex computation uh, or a long running uh, search on the database or, go, or is going out uh, to, the, to the web or, or, or accessing some API uh, where the server is running and it's not responding, uh, that you, know, you, you let me know what's going on, right? That, that you're busy, that, that something's happening, that it hasn't crashed, uh, or, and that you give me perhaps a, a real progress bar, right? That uh, it's not a fake one where, you know, it, uh, it, it, Quickly goes all the way to 80 percent, right, and, the, and then it stays for at 80 percent for an hour, and you don't know where it really where you really are, right? That's fake. Uh, uh, and and that it, it, if I if I think it's just been too long, I, I should be able to cancel and say, you know, you know what, just forget it. Right? Just, just just don't. I'm not, I'll try that later. I'll come back to that. And, and that and that you provide them a certain level of freedom and control over the the system. 
That, that's very important, right? To, to kind of have some way of telling what the application is doing, right? Uh, that, um, uh, that oftentimes we just ask ourselves, what is it doing? Why, why is it, you know, have, especially if I've done this before and, and I had a you know, mental model of what I thought it was trying to do, but now it's behaving in a weird way. Um, one one uh, just a uh, worrying uh, aspect in, in user interfaces is what's happening in the uh, uh, in the um, uh, 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 in the pilots right that, that, that they use these automated pilots uh, autopilots that, that they can do almost anything right they can they can you know just 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 uh, uh, go from point A to point B without any intervention of the of the of, of the pilot. And, uh, and so there's a controversy. There's a, there's a lot of discussion in the in this industry on how how much more help can we give the pilots, or maybe it has been too much help, right? Because the, the the pilots just seem to be creating their own mental models on what they can really expect of the autopilot to actually do, right? That uh, they're not sure of what what what, what the pilot is actually autopilot actually doing. You know, it might be that they're 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 flying and. Um, all of a sudden, you know, it's been a couple, you know, an hour or so into the flight, and everything's going smooth, and all of a sudden, just the plane just you know, goes down, and then it just goes up, and then it just continues. And then, and the pilots look at themselves and says, "Why did it do that?" You know, they 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 have no explanation, no no view into the decisions, right, of what you know the overall system is doing, and coming up with those with those decisions of, of doing certain things or not, right, uh, or even even uh, worse. Uh, you know the 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 the, um, uh, the 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 plane might be telling them that they're in, a, in danger, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 the, the pilot is wrongfully uh, uh, expecting uh, the, the the plane to take some action that is not programmed to do, that it's obvious to them that it should do, right? But it's not actually doing it. So that that this that's, that dissonance between the actual features and the actual capabilities of the system. Uh, and the mental model of pilots <laughs> on, on what the user interface allows them, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's worrying, right? And it's a big debate on, on where to go with the use, this user interface. Do, do, they, do we cut back on the user interface, right? And, and to make it uh, clear that these certain things are not capable of, the system is not capable of doing this, so it is your responsibility, okay? Or just going all out. And just make it completely automatic, and, and that the uh, that that the that the human operator is optional, right? Uh, so it's a, there's a big debate right now on on, on which way to go, right? Uh, where you know user interfaces really have life and, and death uh, consequences, right? Um, uh, visibility in the status. Okay, this is where I should have said that. <laughs> uh, visibility into the system status. You know, what is the system doing? Why is it doing the, the? Why is it behaving the way it's behaving? And why? You know, wh what? Where's the difference between what I expect and the way it's actually behaving? You know? uh, so I, I, I should have some means uh, of knowing of it, of it explaining itself, right? Or, or you know, as as systems become more and more intelligent. Uh, especially you know, with AI and deep learning, and uh, that uh, uh, that that uh, you know, we, we might we might we might explain to somebody or to some of these systems how to play chess, uh, but then you know there's no no possible way that we can beat them, even though we explained it how to how to play it. Uh, there's no way for for us to ever beat it, right? Or go, for instance, the, the uh, and so we, we're creating systems that uh, would would uh, be able to perhaps. Explain, you know, what the system is doing at, at a level that is human consumable, right? Because oftentimes we we open up these systems and we have absolutely no idea how they're doing or how they're they're so complex uh, that there's no way that, that any one of us would be able to ever understand what it's doing, right? So that, that's very worrisome, right? That that, uh, that all these new systems are just uh, way way too complex. Uh, flexibility and efficiency. You know, once folks have uh, have learned. Uh, certain aspects uh, they might feel tedious uh, that uh, you know what, what, that originally things that uh, we thought were very useful at first you know where we have a lot of wizards and uh, a lot of hand holding uh, and, and and letting us uh, you know uh, there was a very very easy way of using the application once we become experts we f we feel that those same user interfaces are just getting in the way right they're very very slow it's just uh, it's just very frustrating so. 
Uh, so certainly uh, co uh, consider uh, ways that uh, uh, that uh, the, the the system could adapt uh, and, and, you know, for uh, new users and, and more expert users, where we can give them accelerators, they can save uh, cert certain tedious tasks, that they can just run them uh, automatically later on. You know, you know, save searches, save save operations and whatnot. Uh, recognition, not recall again, not uh, uh, not uh, assuming that the user is going to use their their mental capacity to remember things. Anything that we can represent visually as a stage change or or, or some uh, you know abstract icon that can elicit uh, some idea of what is it that uh, it's meant for. Uh, certainly, that 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 uh, definitely helps. Um, error prevention. Uh, so cer certainly, we need to deal with when things go wrong uh, and give them help and uh, and and, uh, and alternatives and give them error error messages, meaningful error messages. But ideally, you want to prevent the error from in the first place. So uh, so uh, you know what what typically is a good practice in data modeling uh, and also in SQL uh, in, uh, when, when that, that you you, you, you try to be as strongly typed as possible, right? Uh, to make sure that the data that you're storing in the database is uh, strongly typed. That is, if, you, if you're expecting a date, well, it better be a date. If it's a, if it's a number, it better be a number and whatnot, yes? Uh, same thing when, when, when uh, the data layer, right? We, we, we typically use uh, prepared statements uh, to, to make sure that we're not, uh, we're not um, folks are not injecting uh, SQL and that, uh, that the data that is coming, it has been validated and that's good data, it's not bad data. Uh, same thing in the user interface. In the user interface, uh, use um, uh, widgets that are based on the correct data type, right? So, so if, we, if you're asking for date, uh, you know, don't just give them a text field where they, they can type a date. Instead, give them a, you know, a, tech, a, a date widget, right? Uh, you know, because uh, otherwise it'll be much, it will be error prone, right? That we can we can mistype something, uh, 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 or if it's an email, then, then just you know, give me the correct characters like the keyboards do in, in phones, right? They adapt to uh, the, da the data that uh, we're expecting, right? So it'll, it'll change to a date widget, or or email widget, or URL widget, or whatever, right? Whatever, or number, or phone number, whatever the data type that we're expecting. So that that minimizes the uh, the chances of uh, uh, of error, right? So uh, so any uh, any chance you have uh, to to validate and, and um, as early as possible and as uh, frequent as possible. Right. Um, obviously, uh, recognize uh, errors. Right. That, that we can provide them with useful, uh, actionable errors of what is it that they can do uh, or come back later, uh, as opposed to you know give them some some um, some jargon or or some uh, uh, you know a very very explicit uh, pointer or address uh, where the error occur that is completely useless to an end user. Uh, we could certainly do that in the logs. Uh, that could be certainly useful for developers, right? That, that want to debug uh, and triage the the problem, but net, uh, certainly not at the uh, at the end end user uh, uh, level. Uh, aesthetics certainly uh, very very important. Uh, you know, you know, we, we we've seen that uh, uh, that that you know, many, many of the, our uh, current uh, cor uh, corporate folks. Uh, I've been going towards a minimalistic uh, approach uh, that uh, that uh, you know from a, from a school of aesthetics uh, that uh, you know if you use you know, good good use of white space uh, has uh, has has very is very very benef beneficial. Um, Google being Google, uh, everybody know what what that bar is and everybody knows what to, what to type in there. Um, uh, you know perhaps it's a little bit too, too uh, a little bit too minimalistic. Um, I don't know that that would work uh, for any user interface. That you just put a bar there and you don't know what to type. Uh, you know, perhaps um, when you first come up with your next uh, killer application, um, you know you might want to give some 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 uh, clue what is that you want me to type there. Uh, perhaps with a with a sample piece of text there. That uh, but certainly you know there, there's certain uh, certainly there's there's a uh, uh, different extremes, right? Where you you, you just give them everything, uh, and, and and therefore minimizing the value of any one feature on that screen. Right? If you, you just give them so much 
that uh, I don't really, you know, uh, minimizes what I can possibly do. Whereas this is very important, right? I can just I can only type a search, uh, a, a search. Uh, so anywhere in between, perhaps, might be good. Uh, testing the UI. Is, so I, ideally, uh, uh, you're going to run uh, some uh, some tests with uh, real users. Uh, that um, you're going to have them exercise a, a, a particular task. Um, and, um, and 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 you know and, and as they as they are going through it, you know, resist the temptation of helping them, right? Uh, that's that's the, the fact that they're getting stuck somewhere, and it's it's not their fault. Right? Don't blame them. Uh, don't don't like like I tend to do with my my wife. Um, you know, she, she, we always joke that uh, that you know she, she she comes close to a computer and starts. Things start to uh, deform uh, on screen. Uh, it actually happened the other day. It was, uh, you know, I would, I would, I would, you know, she wanted to take a picture, so I, I turned on the, uh, the, the the camera, and I'm going to take the picture, and it's just fine. And then I give it to her, and when she takes it, right, the the, the screen is, is is like the form, and it has this jiggling. It says, "Thanks." She she gives it back to me, and it's perfect. It says, "Look, it's it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it." And then I give it back to her. And she's taking the picture, and, and same thing. You know, so there must be something with your hands, or, or maybe it's where you're standing, or we couldn't figure it out. Uh, up until we realized that that uh, uh, you know we got into this big argument. This, this, uh, uh, it's you, blah blah blah. Uh, me being a developer, obviously, um, you know, always blaming the user, uh, and uh, uh, so so you know we realized that when she was holding it, she was holding it in landscape. You know, but what I was holding, I was holding it in portrait. Uh, and it was the camera. The camera was bad. That when you held it in landscape, it, it had this. Uh, the autofocus was 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 bad, right? Uh, but you know, just just resist the temptation as a developer, right? Of of blaming the user, right? Uh, don't 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 get into this. Uh, um, certainly don't 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 uh, get into the um, the attitude uh, that it must be the user, okay? That it must be the user, uh, the loser. Uh, yeah, so you know, where where did you find those stupid users, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's designed right. You're just you're just dumb to use it correctly, right? So it's a very common uh, response from from the from the developer development team, and we just have to resist getting into that uh, attitude. Okay. All right. <laughs>